Welcome to EDU Aero Classroom. In this tutorial, we will learn about force and Newton's laws of motion. Till now, we have discussed that object may move with constant velocity or with uniform acceleration. But still, we have not answered the question as to what causes the motion. Newton describes this ex external cause as force. Now, we will consider certain examples. A footballer sets the stationary football in motion by kicking it. A golfer sets the uh, stationary golf ball by hitting it with its back. And when we do open the door, open the closed door, we push or pull it. All these examples give a concept of force. From all these examples, we conclude that in each and exa every example, either we have kicked, uh, either we have pushed the pushed the object or has pulled it. So we may define force as any push or pull. We categorize forces in two ways. One is balanced forces and the other is unbalanced forces. As we can see in the figure, in object A, two forces act in equal and opposite direction. So these forces cancel out the effect of each other and hence the object A remains stationary. These type of forces are called unbalanced balance forces. And in object B, only one force acts which causes it to accelerate. These forces are called unbalanced forces. Force is a vector quantity. It has both magnitude and direction. Now we will discuss the first law of motion. The first law of motion states that an object at rest continues to be at rest and an object in motion continues to be in uniform motion unless an external force acts on it. By this we mean that an object which is at rest will not start moving unless it is acted upon by a force. An object which is moving with constant velocity will not accelerate until an external force acts on it. Now we come to discuss about mass and inertia. Mass is actually the amount of matter contained in that object, while inertia is defined as the property of the object due to which it resists any change in its state of motion or of uniform or of rest when an external force acts on it. We all know that it is easy to push light objects but it is far more difficult there to push heavy objects. This is all due to inertia. Actually mass is the measure of inertia. More is the mass, more is the inertia and more is the resistance to change its motion or, rest, or of rest. It is a common observation when we are in a stationary bus and the bus suddenly starts then we tend to fall backward. This is due to the fact that our uh, legs which are in contact with the bus moves with the, with the bus but uh, our body which has inertia uh, tends to fall backward because it it uh, wants to remain uh, it wants to, uh, at rest because it has inertia so we fall backward and this same is the case when a uh, moving bus suddenly stops our, uh, our legs which are in contact with the bus comes to a stop but our body which is moving tends to uh, maintain its constant due to inertia and that's why we fall forward. Now let us understand what the Newton's law or second law of motion is. First of all we define momentum. Momentum P is the product of mass and velocity that is P is equal to mv. Now we define Newton's second law of motion. It states that the force acting on an object is directly proportional to the rate of change of momentum that is F directly proportional to del P upon del T. By directly proportional, we mean that if del P upon del T increases, then force increases, and if del P upon del T decreases, then force decreases. So F is directly proportional to P F minus P I upon del T, where I stands for initial momentum and F stands for final momentum. We can write P F as M V F and P I as M V I. So F is directly proportional to mvf minus mvi upon del t that is f directly proportional to mvf minus vi upon del t and we know that vf minus vi upon del t is actually acceleration so f is directly proportional to mass into acceleration and removing the sign of proportionality by taking a constant k f is uh, kma so now we have 
f is equal to k m a and the value of f m and a are so chosen in the SI system of units that k comes out to be 1. So we get f is equal to m a. So the SI units of force is kg that is the unit of mass and meter per second square unit of acceleration that is equal to kg dot meter per second square. This is called 1 Newton. Now we come to define what is Newton. So 1 Newton is the force which acts on an object mass 1 kg and causes in it then acceleration of 1 meter per second square. Now let us discuss about Newton's third law of motion. Newton's third law of motion states that to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. This means the force exerted by A on B is equal and opposite to the force exerted by B on A. That is force FAB force on A due to B is equal to negative of FBA that is force on B due to A. Now the important thing to note here is that both action and reaction occur simultaneously. We can call any force as and the corresponding force as reaction. For example, in the in the above example, we can call any one of the force FAB or FPA as action and the corresponding reaction force. It is not that action is the cause or reaction is the effect. It is just that the equal and opposite forces. So F we cannot call FAB as the action or FA as the reaction. And both forces act on different objects. So both objects may have different acceleration as we know that A is equal to F upon M and mass of objects can be different. Now let us understand the principle of conservation of momentum. From Newton's second law, we have F equals to K del P upon del T and K equals to 1 as we know that. So F is equal to del P upon del T. Now if force on an object becomes 0, then del P upon del T is equal to 0. This implies that del P is equal to 0, PF minus PI equals to 0. So PF comes out to be equal to PI. So if the net force on an object is 0, then the momentum remains conserved. We can extend the same argument for collection of objects. By collection of objects, we mean that if we consider two objects and then we see the external force on the combination of two objects and this combination of two objects or the collection of objects under consideration is called a system. Now, principle of conservation of momentum states that if net force on a system, that is the collection of objects under consideration is zero, the total momentum of the system does not change or we can say it remains conserved. An important thing to note is the internal forces in the system will not be included. By net force we mean net external force. Internal forces may be non-zero. Let us consider two objects of masses m1 and m2 moving with initial velocities u1 and u2 such that u1 greater than u2. Since u1 is greater than u2, hence they will collide and will exert a force on each other. Let after collision their velocities be v1 and v2. Now from Newton's third law, we know that Fa is equal to minus Fba. So m1a1 is equal to minus m2a2. m1 v1 minus u1 upon del t, this is the a1, is equal to minus m2 v2 minus u2 upon del t. So m1 v1 minus m1 u1 is equal to minus m2 v2 plus m2 u2. So m1 v1 plus m2 v2 which is the total momentum after collision is equal to m1 u1 plus m2 u2 that is the total momentum before collision. So this is the result total momentum after collision is equal to total momentum before collision. Because FAB and FPA were internal forces and net external force was zero hence momentum is conserved. And this is the principle of conservation of momentum.